This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. So just for the recording purpose again, we are discussing about the playbook after the ad hoc commands. So as part of the playbook, we are going to do multiple tasks in a simple way if I say multiple modules. That is something which we are going to do that. So what is playbook? So playbook has a multiple play. Now each play, please understand, you have a main tool section, which is hosts, YAML file, remember that, host and tasks. Okay, now this section host means what? So it can be a local host, that one which we tried last time, or all, this is something group name, or, or custom group, the, for example, web and all be created in inventory, right? So it can be anything. Now, what can be a tasks? So task here, it can be module one, okay? Whatever that we are executing and its parameter. Okay. And module two and its parameter, module three and its parameter, module three and its parameter. So these are the parameters we have in this. Okay, so this is the playbook. So map modules means this is all parameters. So now how do we write a you know, playbook? So let me copy it one of each sample one. So Ansible playbook example DevOps school. Okay, and here just I'm copying one of the example. Uh, I think this is okay. Skeleton, I'm just copying. And this is all not needed. This is not needed. And this is not needed. That's all. See. Now you have this skeleton and it's yaml file so again it will require a little bit of time understanding this yaml specifications but here this is the one play has a host and task now task which i said is a module and parameter so what what will do you know what that is where the ansible documentation will help you a lot for example you need copy modules right so apt module is here yeah so first thing what was that ABT module, right? So here it is. Go to the bottom section of the page, okay? Look at this example. And this all YAML examples you have given already. You just look at this, what you need, and then get it done. So I just need one of the one, which is here. And I will use only space to add a, you know, one, two. This YAML files, you have to respect that. Now, this is uh, something watch it percent that's all so simple so whatever we are doing here we got it done here now what is the next modules which you have copy module so let me go to the copy module enter and here go to the bottom section which is example here it is copy one of which Uh, put it the alignment uh, 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 this is not needed actually now what is the source file so it was index.html index.html right yeah index.html and what is the destination so destination was this one simple and finally done what is the next module so the next module is service module so let's go for the service module, which is here, and go to the examples again. Okay, and I'm not reading it. You will read it. You'll understand this because it's uh, everything is same. And here, one two, one two, one two, one two. This is a not Apache HTTPD. It's Apache two service name because uh, Ubuntu, right? Done, and good to go. So guys, I just wrote a playbook 
which has a three task and it's a parameter so tell me was it difficult to write a playbook all of you if you know the sudo code then how do you feel about it all of you yes rajesh so what to do now how do we run it so guys we have a command so see that instead of running 3 1 let me run only one and this uh, playbook you can run with the ansible hyphen playbook okay that's the utility and inventory because here you specify web uh, group custom group which is host so here you don't need to specify module and all will not come and just specify the playbook name like the playbook.yaml any file name i mean file name can be anything simple so now here you have a three tasks for three thousand tasks you can run it very simple so let me copy this playbook.yaml in my server and coming out of it it got stuck i guess <laughs> yeah so duplicate session Ubuntu and sudo hyphen s so now vi and playbook dot yaml the file name can be anything okay so that's not a problem and store this code and i for insert and then save it done and finally you have a three task or 300 task in your playbook you can run in hundreds of machine depends on the inventory in just one command and see the one that enter one machine is failing it will fail that's okay and done so guys did you understand that what is a playbook now and are you are you okay with this some of the stuff i just directly use it this way. all of you any questions any doubts Hello, I'm out of the time. Yes, Rajesh. Yeah. Okay. So next thing which I'm going to tell you, let's let's do put it in this way, guys. You are writing a code. Okay. So if you're writing a code, variables will come, operators will come, and those are the things. Any scripting language it will come. So now how do we work with it? So let me tell you in a simple way you can introduce the variables so because here i'm you see i'm hard coding here 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 all i'm hard coding it we should not do that so you should set the variable so what i have um, one page that will be sufficient for you and that is uh, variables enter this one okay and this is has a complete explanation though i don't need it for now I just need it for this code. This code. So let me discuss this code with you. Let's understand. So now the question is how do we introduce the variables in the playbook? Simple. So you know the playbook you had a host and task, but you can have a bars section also to declare the variables. Yes, you can see my code. Bars. Here I am hard coding the variables in the playbook itself. So variable name is my name colon space values. My name age, package name and service name. So you have you can declare the variable in the playbook as well. But you you may say Rajesh, I have a hundreds of variables. I don't want to declare in the playbook. It's so irritating. So what do you do? You can declare in the again different files using this parameter this uh, stanchas so can we create this file vars.yaml look at the screen vi vars.yaml and enter this all variables 
and here values I'll just change, change on in var file. Okay, save it. Done. So yes, you can declare the variable second way using this one. Now you say Rajesh, I want the user to prompt the variables values. So how, how can you get it done? So here you can use the vars prompt. The variable name is version and whatever the entry will happen followed by this message will be value set to the version. So these are the three method using that you can declare the variables and pass it to the playbook. Now next question you will ask me Rajesh can we how can okay we have declared the variable but how can we use in the program. So I think answer you have somewhere here. Variable name is package name. And how do we use that variable? Simple. Double curly braces and the name of variable. Here you, you see that. Here you see that. It's very simple, right? So this is how you can declare the variable in various ways. And this is how you use in the playbook. Now next question is, can I introduce the variables? Please hear me out. Can I introduce the variables? during the task executions the answer is yes the code which i have selected you may introduce the variable during the tasks as well that means till here the variables will not be there but here the variables will be declared and this runs in the sequence okay so here it is now next question you ask rajesh i am running one modules as part of the task and the value of modules that means return value of the module output i want to use the as a variable value for the certain variables like runtime variable how can we do that and the answer is this code see here what we are doing there is one module called shell i'm trying to find out the all the text file and the directory is root ansible but whatever the output of the find dot star whatever it is I want to set the val value for the variable called find underscore output. That means runtime variables also you can set it up and using register. So and how how do we use it? So here you have a debug debug module. Debug module is a kind of echo kind of it which will help you to display the message and stuff like that. So here what I'm trying to say. How can you declare the variable? This is the one way, second way, third way, fourth way, and the last one, <clears throat> fifth way. How do we use it? Curly braces with the variable name. So it's very simple, right? Did you understand that all of you? Yes, Radish. Yeah. So let me run this code. Out of this file is not there. Okay, so let me create it. <coughs> VI. I can declare the same variable, override the values and all. And now run this. I'm creating this VI var play dot yaml save it and symbol command is the same one right <coughs> the file is this one and run this done See, it's a prompting you. Hey, what do you want to install? So I just type it anything. Enter. And you see all the interpolation. Debug, you should check this here because we are displaying all the variables here, especially this one. So it will return nothing because the text file is not there in the current directory. Yeah. See here. And here it returned nothing because here you see no such files and directory. Return value is null actually. So it's failed thus way. So guys, did you understand how do we use variables in the in the Ansible?
Any questions? Any doubts? Okay. So now next topic is what is roles? You see, we learn ad hoc code, then we learn playbook, and then now role. What is role? So I'll put it in a very simple way. Uh, see guys, simple, okay? So what we have so far uh, in this whole session. So in the whole session, if you see, there is a tasks. There's a task. These are the tasks, you know, these are the tasks. And what else we have? And we have variables. Right? These are the two things we have. What else you are having here? So if I am seeing this one files also. File or script, it can be anything. So we have a files. Okay. And few more things you can have it. I'm not discussing right now. You may have a template. You may have handlers and few more things. Custom code always there. But right now, not complicating it. So you may have this one, which you know that. What is a task? So these are the tasks. What is the variables? These are the variables. What is the files used in the Ansible playbook? Here it is. So now what Ansible is saying, hey, we are using so many resources in order to functioning the code, like tasks, vars, files, template, handlers, this and that, and multiple playbooks also. Can we manage it with certain director, directory structure? I said directory structure. Can we manage it? So the question was, what is the role here? So guys, don't get confused. This role, the one which I'm talking about is a directory structure. But for what? So directory structure for managing your code efficient way. Then you say, why we have to man? I mean, why? Because I'm, I have created a code and it's working fine. Just, I'm, just now I checked it. Why do we have to manage in the certain directory structure all this code? The reason is very simple you know that your code setup but what about your team members if they they want to understand where's the files where's the playbook where's the task where's the variables where's the handlers where's the template where's the other files you have to give the proper kt that's okay that's one thing let's say you have written on some of the code which is publicly available for the whole world how can you share the code? Everyone should understand how you have configured, how you have architected the code, how you have designed the code. It's very difficult to transfer the tech, I mean, you know, skills. So what we'll do, we'll follow the certain fixed directory structure where you are supposed to copy the code and then you can share that code with the whole world. Everyone understand automatically, no need to transfer any technologies or something. It's like if you remember the Maven, we had a fixed directory structure. Role is also a directory structure, recommended directory structure for maintaining your code, variables, and files, and many more. Are you understanding all of you guys? What is the role? Yes. All of you? Hello? Yes, Raj. So now the question is, how do we create a role? How do we create a skeleton so I can feel the, my code? Because I have a code ready, but I don't have a role. How can we create? So there's one more command for it. And that is you have to learn Ansible-Galaxy in it. And the role name is web. So what I did, I created a command, a web role. If you see the tree, tree is not there, right? Let me start it. Look at my screen, uh, tree, and see here, this is the role. What do you have there? Let me scan it. I told you, this is just a structure. What directory you have it? You have a default files directory. These are the directory, you know. Default directory, files directory, handlers directory, meta directory, 
task directory, template directory, test directory, was directory. What it contains? So guys, default is for variables. Bars is also for variables. Then you will say, Rajesh, why we have a two variables directory? You know what? If you are a developer of playbook, you should keep the variable in a default. If you are the users of that code and you may want to override certain variable, let's say Apache is running on 80 port, but you want to run on 80, 81 port. How do you do that? So you should modify this file. That's a practice. That's the reason we have two places. Now you are using index.html that can be repackaged also where you are supposed to keep it file. You have so many tasks where you are supposed to keep it here in the task main.yaml. It can be multiple files as well. So this is the one. Some more directories are like template and handlers and all. Right now I did not discuss. I will ask you to spend some time. Small, small things. So get it done. What is a meta? Meta is a place where you specify the name of the role, author of the role, description of the role, dependency of the role and all this you know meta information about this license and all kind of things so i have created a you know structure now let me feed the code look at this one more time so first thing i'm using the uh, one file which is index.html it should go to the web the web files and html i'm going to copy done so now if you see that tree in, under the files, you have index.html. What else? So I am going to have now code. So let me have this code, this task, not a section. Okay. So please remember that. Copy this code. And uh, here, vi web tasks main.yaml and is the code that's all simple and now i have variables uh, this i'll remove it right now only this one is okay so vi web vats default you can also put it up main.yaml and here enter done so just uh, managing the code efficient way okay so now my role is ready. I will also add some text file in this directory. Touch Rajesh uh, dot dot Okay. Now why I have added because you know this should not fail. Last time it got failed, right? So this should not return the error. So root ansible is there, right? Yeah, is there. So now the role is ready. Now the question is how do we run this so for that you need another playbook and this time you need it let me show you the playbook here you have a roles and the directory it should be web simple calling role this code is a again playbook but it will call the roles so what you want to do vi site.yaml typically we name the site.yaml the playbook is called the roles. We call it the site.yaml. You can keep it anything. But this is the one web directory, which is exists in the same same place. So how do we call this role? I think you know that answer very well. Instead of this one, the site.yaml and rest of things will be same. And here. So guys, did you understand all of you? What is the role? All of you? All of you? Yes, Radesh. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to teach you uh, as part of this workflow. So you learn ad hoc commands. You see the power of, power of ad hoc commands. One command you can run hundreds of machines. But if you have a, if you have a hundreds of commands you can use the playbook and run in hundreds of machines but if you want to organize the code then role so role can be used multiple times right uh, 
which one roles i mean playbook also you can multiple times but role is a way to organize the code in an efficient way and share with the whole world and with your team and outside okay so now i'll tell you the one of the best news so we, guys you know what after learning all the technology in fact it's a, it's a one of the truth is you don't have to write a code actually what i'm trying to say here is see why i am teaching you ansible because you should know terminologies how it works all this uh, you know how to take the automations for the, for the how to troubleshoot that's the main important thing but you know what most of the code has been written already yes most of the code has been written so how do how do people the share this code again it's a role but the question is where do we share it so all the ansible code you will find it in ansible galaxy thousands of role has been written thousands of role here it is and you want to search for the roles search for let's say java i want to find, i want to write i get a role which should install the java now i don't have a time to do that so here you see 319 rule has been written by the community i mean here you have more than 5000 rules overall but java related 300 plus but i should look for the by download count so i will get the good role and see this is the guy who has written a, one of the role which is the the name of this one and the download is pretty huge actually you can see the highest one and rating is also very good last update has happened you want to you want to understand this role so click on it you want to see the course yes you should check this code before running the production here it is look at this role it's a var task meta you know it's a role structure the one which i covered last session so this uh, code if you want to use it means you have to download this and then you have to bundle it or uh, is it like another yeah. way in the directory from there that you can uh, run it yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Just give me a few minutes only. So this code, you have it. Someone has written a role, very good role, and everyone is using. So why can't you use it? I have created my one role, which is web, that will deploy my web, web applications. That is okay. But I want to install Tomcat, MySQL, uh, you know, Oracle, Apache, Nginx. I want to install java i want to install x y z the 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 software which is very common for the whole world so get a role from here how do we get it command i think you have it in front of you i'm running it enter it you see the follow the command where it's copying it it's copied in your user directories done this is one of the preferred locations for the user roles installed actually you can go inside this directory and study this a little bit this is the best practice i mean the this role has been written by the following the best practice so if you want to learn the more better you know programming approach you can you should read this i mean study this one but right now i'm going to use it so how do we use it so just specify the role name in your site dot yaml don't use a tab by mistake also and see simple i did not do even one line of programming and this role which will install the java in my machine you see java is not there and now i am running this role you see i have not even spent five seconds of time writing the code i got one of the best written code ever for installing a java installed it run it and now it will install the java c this now our girling guy is running the role the role name did you understand that now guys after knowing everything you don't have to do anything but till you know that you have to spend time so now it's installing the java in your system Just wait for a few more seconds.
Done. Can we check the Java install or not? See, which is Java? I am curious actually. So it has installed 11. Okay. I wanted to install something else. What to do now? I think you should go to the var and default. Let me check the default. You know that while default variables, it has set nothing. So we can go to the var's locations. And here you have this YAML file. That means many variable files are there, which will be applied. So again, the logic is if you are running here the task, logic is here you see the this will be called I guess because it is a main.yaml. And here is saying, hey, if operating system is, you know, Ubuntu run accordingly those playbooks. So here, uh, this will be running. And here, Java package and Ubuntu and stuff like that. So yeah, you will go to the VARs and the Ubuntu file will be called here. And here, see Ubuntu files, different version, 20. This is the file. So if you want to change the Java, you have to change this file. So guys, did you understand? And you know how many uh, roles you have? Thousands of roles you have here. Thousands of roles. So tell me one thing. If someone will ask you, uh, let's say Ashwarya, hey Ashwarya, write a role, I mean write a cancelable code, maybe roles, which will deploy Tomcat which will deploy MySQL or which will deploy XYZ software. Would you be able to write it? Rajni, Venkatesh, Nikasis. All of you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is the topic. I will give you some projects in the WhatsApp group and accordingly we'll take it up. Okay, guys, any questions anyone have?